Uh, you've got a really uh, special project coming up here. Uh, uh, you, you've been so involved uh, in business as an entrepreneur. Uh, you've got a very special project coming up. Uh, talk to us about uh, your upcoming uh, little, uh, little deal you got going on. Yeah, so I, for a little over a decade, I have been running two completely different lives, like Clark Kent and Superman, where I'm on TV. I've been on about 20 seasons of The Challenge and The Real World and various spinoff shows. And um, no one wants the reality star to be smarter and more successful than them. You would hate it. You, you're, the point is you sit on your couch. You want to be like, oh, they're fun to look at, hence sex symbol. But you don't want to <laughs> be like... You don't want to be like, oh, man, that guy's crushing me in my nine to five, too. So we don't talk about that there. OK. And then at home, I'm a venture capitalist here in Kansas City. I help businesses get off the ground. We ensure that they can accelerate their progress and get to milestones that they otherwise wouldn't be able to get to without our infrastructure. And guess what happens in that life? No one wants the venture capitalist to be a reality star. So why we don't talk about it. I keep both of my worlds very separate. And I got tired of it because eventually I became world-class at both. And I got to a point where I, where I had this thing where I wanted to make a business show. And we filmed it in Kansas City. We moved 60 startups from across the United States at, from 5,000 plus applicants to several mansions off of the plaza next to the Nelson Art Gallery. And we brought in these business, up and coming business celebrities that judged it. So it's kind of like Top Chef meets Shark Tank. And every day they went through a series of classes and then were tested in, you know, pitches and exercises and stuff. And they were all graded, ranked and quantified to eventually see who is the cumulative winner of what we call the, the best startup on the block. So I'm pulling from my all the things that I learned in the TD world and all the things that I've learned in the business education world and combining them in what I hope to be the most educational reality show ever created for business owners. Uh, and if I'm not mistaken, I, I've, I heard you on um, Bananas podcast talk about this a little bit. If I'm not mistaken, there's like, I mean, this is, you know, startups, you know, people trying to uh, do something with their, uh, with their business. There's some drama in this. You would least expect it, but there is some drama, isn't there? They're putting, at, well, for, okay. So just entrepreneurship in general is drama filled. You're putting your life savings at risk your reputation at risk, you're putting your life on hold, your life is going to be harder with your spouse, with your family, with your friends. Also, you could just have the market beat the crap out of you. The success rate of, of truly scalable, big, like especially tech ventures, which is the stuff that we tend to specialize in, the success rate is like 99% failure rate. So your base, everyone that tries pretty much gives everything that they've got kind of waste if you want to look at it that way, years of their life all for there to be like a 1% success. And then in that success, that's really entertaining because they get super rich and powerful. And then the, we get all that. But then in this game, they're flying here alone and they're competing head to head in very subjective things. Two people will pitch their hearts out and a judge will hear what they want to hear, fill out their rubrics. And not everyone agrees about where they should be. So we've got like, there's a villain startup in our, in this season um, and they're a really good startup. They're highly valued. They're really kind of trendy, but they got their butts kicked a couple of times by, by people who, in my opinion, did better than them, but they disagree. And so, um, it was, uh, yes, there's some drama. Interesting. And, uh, my last question, I, I want you to explain, uh, how people can, uh, can watch this, but I did want to, and I don't know if you can really dive into this, but obviously we're in crazy times right now with this pandemic. Is there an angle where, you know, someone says, hey, I lost my job because of the pandemic and I'm trying to do my own thing? Because I would imagine a lot of people are trying to do that uh, during a time like this. Yeah, well, um, do you know, entrepreneurship is a, it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of people, right? Like exercise and weightlifting are the same thing, but they're not. And so when it comes to, if you lose your job in the pandemic, I wouldn't try and start the types of businesses that we're showcasing in this show. Now, you. that doesn't mean though that you can't, it, it, that would be unsafe and completely irresponsible. But in some cases, it might accelerate the process where you've been doing it for, uh, let's say it's 2020, you've been doing it for like a year. And now like your back is up 
up against the wall, you need it to work and you, or, or else, then, I, then a lot of businesses like that started to thrive. So we had massive failures within the first six months of COVID where things were uh, in my portfolio were going out of business left and right. But we also had unprecedented amounts of things that were skyrocketing because they were solving a problem that was real that be, was a bigger accelerated problem because of the pandemic um and so the way you phrase it though just kind of scares me because entrepreneurship tends to ruin all of your money and so if you're looking at for it to be a a, a, a the, the next thing after you've been fired it's probably not the thing uh how can people watch this uh when is it going to come out it is on a free mobile application on Google Play and the iTunes store. So essentially, wherever you get your apps, you can download it there. It's also available to binge on several social media platforms. But we want you to watch it in the app because there's all sorts of behind the scenes consultations that are unedited to watch, functional music to listen to to help you kind of zone out during the day and kind of get into flow states, guided meditations for entrepreneurs. There's a, a slew of things designed to accelerate your progress. Um, and so we really want people to, and it's all free. There's no subscriptions or whatever. It's just, we want more eyeballs on what we're building, especially cause it's right here in Kansas city, born, bred, founded and filmed. Yeah. And a lot of my followers are, uh, a lot of my followers and listeners are in the Kansas city area. So I think that'll definitely be uh, very appealing to them. By the way, I don't know in case I missed it. Um, or I don't know if we even mentioned it. What is the name of the show? The blocks. The blocks. With an X. Yes. Yeah. My, my company that I founded like uh, over a decade ago is called beta blocks is in like the building blocks of beta stage companies. And we've subsequently launched a handful of different departments, alpha blocks, beta blocks, building blocks, block shop, the block. So it's all like blocks related things. They're all kind of color coded because they, each product is designed for entrepreneurs at different stages of business. So we kind of use the colors of the rainbow to as almost our chronological story and uh, the blocks is red as in the first color of the rainbow the first thing when you enter our world we want you to watch and then as you get further into entrepreneurship you need um, more sophisticated complicated products and that gets further down in our color spectrum you know that's really interesting because i mean i i was going to ask you this we kind of uh talked about you know how you got into this a little bit earlier um there was a season of the challenge. I think it was the Island and I can't remember who it was. I think it might've been Dunbar. Uh, I don't quote me on that, but they gave the uh, contestants a cell phone that only had like 10 minutes left and you have to share it among your castmates. And I remember one contestant was on the phone with someone and something about his business was not going very well. And, you know, obviously because of the limit you had on your phone, he, he had to take off. I mean, you're leaving a lot behind. And I'm sure there are people uh, who, you know, fill in for your uh, duties when you're doing these challenges, which I've heard can take six to eight weeks, even longer. Um, is that ever like a concern of yours? I mean, I, cause I would assume, you know, that's gotta be on your mind, even when you're playing these games, uh, being away from, uh, from your home life and everything else that you've got going on. Yeah, it's a huge concern and it's incredibly responsible for me to leave. Um, how I combat that is right, at least for my particular business and that's kind of changed, but my bread and butter business is I don't, we don't bring on new clients while I'm gone or even as I'm about to leave, it's just, we can fulfill their needs while I'm gone because I hire people that do the, the consultations and the banking and the accounting and all that kind of stuff is it, it should operate technically while I'm away. But there is a very complicated system of if there are true emergencies, those emergencies get vetted by emergency vetters who can then get a signal to my wife who can then get a signal to a producer. And if there is and, and the producers can help differentiate um, what's a true emergency or not. And we have had them. And, uh, and they know that they know that if I'm not offered a little bit more flexibility than the average cast member, then I won't show up. Um, and cause it's like, if you want just a bunch of only fans, people great, um, that there are no only fans emergencies, or at least not that I'm aware of. Um, but if you want, if you want, uh, if you want an international sex symbol genius, he might require a couple extra emergency emails occasionally. And I also don't, cross the line like if it's not an emergency i'll be like this can wait tell them this 
Um, and I do get, I get 10 minutes a week with my wife. And so it, that tends to be a little bit of, um, of a rundown. I'd be like, did you talk to this department, this department, this department? And then normally it's like, good, good, good. Cause I only want to hear about massive emergencies. And then we're not allowed to talk about the show or else they hang up, they're listening. So you can't yeah. say anything. So it ends up, we talk about the chiefs, like, um, <laughs> cause that, like, cause that's what the only thing that I care about that's going on that I'm allowed to talk about. I'm like, are you healthy? Are you happy? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, did this department have a fire? Did this department have a fire? Am I getting sued about from anyone? And then she's like, no, everything's good. Then I'm like, how'd the chiefs do? <laughs> and so, um, yeah, that's a, uh, that's what we've got. It's kind of what we talk about. I'm like, well, well so how did Tyreek do? Like, what do you do? Well, what's funny is um, a former castmate of yours, actually uh, from Double Agents, Lolo Jones, she was on Celebrity Big Brother a few years ago. And Celebrity Big Brother is going on right now. They always do it right uh, a week before the Super Bowl. And I remember um, this was the year where the Chiefs lost to the Patriots and the AFC Championship and the Saints lost to the Rams. And I remember uh, a couple of days before the Super Bowl, CBS uh, uh, Celebrity Big Brother had a show, and she, and she was saying "Go Saints" in her um, in her uh, confession. I'm like, nope, the Saints are not in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, mm-hmm. I know Big Brother and Survivor. They're like, you cannot have any information from the outside world, but like, you're allowed to like she, your wife or whoever. They're allowed to tell you like, hey, yeah, the Chiefs won that that kind of thing. That kind of thing is uh, acceptable. Acceptable, yeah. Okay, cool. But, uh, but I'm just not. I'm not allowed to share any information that's going on in my life to her. Right, right. Yeah, I've heard I about. Can, that. I can say, I can say like I'm sick. I can say um, I'm tired. I'm depressed. I can say I'm not eating very well. I can say I'm sleeping really well. I can say those types of general things, but I can't be like. Uh, fill in the blank person did fill in the blank thing and yeah. as soon as I mention one syllable they hang up and you lose your time until the next week 